My name is Nazrin Himada, and I'm the curator here at Plugin ICA. Hello, I'm Jennifer Smith. I am one of the curators for Sovereign Intimacies. I was invited as the guest curator for Gallery 1CO3 as part of the exhibition. Sovereign Intimacies is a partnership between Plugin ICA, Gallery 1CO3, and with support of Video Pool Media Art Center. Sovereign Intimacies explores themes of cultural and community exchange between Indigenous artists and racialized artists from the diaspora. And I understand that this term is quite challenging and many have asked us about what exactly we mean by this, this term diaspora. And I think the term is getting more and more complicated for both Jen and I as we have these ongoing discussions with our communities and interlocutors. And one thing that has come out out of out of the many conversations and, and that sticks out for me is that this term can also apply to the indigenous experience on this land and not just for those who come from elsewhere. As we know, colonization has manifested in a way where borders were drawn where there were none. For us, the term diaspora has come to present something quite specific but also expansive. And as we write in our exhibition essay, this exhibition is for us and when we refer to us, we mean you and me and all the artists we have worked with on this and for our friends and family and the communities who desire conversations between us. We who come from a lineage of people impacted by colonial and white supremacist violence. In order to emphasize the ways in which through our struggles, love and care, we build our solidarity. So for me, the curatorial ethics we have built together with the artists and through encounters with their artworks are grounded in relations and in the question of how do we continue to show up for each other? It is through this intention that I believe liberation manifests in these intimacies that are sovereign. And so for us, the artists presented in this exhibition offer forms of collectivity that are based on the principles of taking time, of learning, of listening, of letting the process guide the work. Each in their own way, the artists have provided a space in which to consider intimacy as active, as action, and as change. The exhibition in all its forms features the work of Hassan Ashraf, Annie Beach, Ayumi Goto, Iris Yirihu, Melanie Monoceros, Peter Morin, Mariana Munoz Gomez, Wanda Nanabush, Norbese Philip, Megan O'Brien, Marianne Redhead, Cheyenne Thomas, and David Thomas. It has been my great honor to be able to co-curate Sovereign Intimacies with Nazrin Himada. Nazrin has done an amazing job of introducing you to the exhibition already, um, but I also did want to add that this exhibition has been something that we have been working on for over a year now. Um, through this time, we have been building a relationship as friends, as collaborators, as colleagues. Um, we've spent time uh, talking about not only the exhibition and the artists within it, along with the subject matter of the exhibition, but it's been brought in many different discussions about um, our place in institutions, our place um, as curators, our place as members of our community, our place as friends, um, our place as colleagues, and how we work together. So there's something really interesting when you bring up um, notions of intimacy that also allow you to really um, expand on the ways that you're engaging with each other and how that actually affects an exhibition um, that you bring together. Uh, because Nazrin and I had been um, discussing many of these ideas before the exhibition even um, came into uh, it came into our lives. It's interesting to think that the process of curating this was happening even before we'd considered co-curating an exhibition together. Um, I can't have think think of a better partner to have co-curated an exhibition with, and I think that it's just um, really important to acknowledge. Um, the uh, depth of the relationship that we've been able to build through curation, through exploring art, um, and through um, these ideas that we felt needed uh, to be discussed further through this exhibition.
So this mixed media installation here called Weaver Girl Limbs to Rainbows is by the Los Angeles-based artist Iris Yiri Hu. Iris's practice foregrounds care and how it manifests in research and apprenticeship. And this installation depicts a painting of the artist weaving on a Taiwanese atayel footloom. And the painting is framed within a Navajo loom with a foundation made up of locally sourced clay that dates back to pre-treaty time. The piece brings together Iris's study of two indigenous weaving practices. The footloom is, uh, comes from the Atayel, who are an indigenous community in Taiwan, who under Japanese occupation had their livelihood destroyed when their weaving, headhunting, and facial tattooing practices were banned under Japanese colonization. When traveling with her mother to Taiwan, Iris apprenticed with Miss Sayan Yura, whose Atayel weaving lineage was severed and spent the last part of her life reclaiming the lost craft. Iris for some time now has also sustained a relationship and continues to apprentice with Melissa Cody, a Navajo artist and weaver. Iris centers a deep commitment to cultivating relationships and intimacy with the histories of people and places in which she encounters, and in this way conditions an ethical framework that connects these histories to the earth, creating a space for how sustainability and awareness are part and parcel of these relations. Iris creates a line of connection between all the elements that come to form our knowledge of place and of being. And Iris uses art as a vehicle to give form to these stories, to these subjects, and to movements that exist in the entanglement of colonization and dispossession of land and of peoples. So on site at Plugin, uh, there is a multi-installation piece by the artists Ayumi Goto and Peter Morin, which is called Gift Away. And this particular installation was very much the inspiration of how this exhibition came to be. Uh, Jen had proposed that uh, we do an exhibition based on friendships and relationships. Uh, when she saw and had come across information on Ayumi's and Peter's performance at the Vancouver Art Gallery several years ago. Now in this exhibition, Peter and Ayumi offered a piece that is based on gift exchange. They have had a long time um, process of outgifting each other um, as a kind of uh, performative gesture in the ways in which gift giving can really take us out of the mode of dwelling in or within a kind of history of racialized violence and moving beyond that to really think of joy, of, of giving, of uh, friendship as a way to create new frameworks around what it means to decolonize. So what you see here on this beautiful blanket, uh, which is of Ayumi and Peter holding hands, is one of their gifts that they had exchanged. Um, and the rest as well, you see t-shirts and the two dolls. And the gifts that are still wrapped were part of a performance that Peter and Ayumi were supposed to perform in Winnipeg on site, uh, but because of COVID restrictions, had passed on the performance to Jen and I, the curators, to wear the masks that they had sent to us, that they wore in their performance at the Vancouver Art Gallery, as a way to become them and to do the gift ex exchange on behalf of them. And you see here on the, on the right uh, a box that's wrapped with orange uh, uh, speckled uh, wrapping paper. And that gift is, to, is a, a gift for me and Jen uh, that we are also supposed to open at the performance. 
Um, and so hopefully this performance will take place once restrictions in Winnipeg are lifted. And we're hoping to have an evening with Peter and Ayumi where we discuss the performance afterwards and reveal the contents of the gift exchange. Um, um, that Peter and Ayumi don't know, uh, don't know what the contents of those gifts are. Uh, they lived together and had made these gifts to each other in secret. So the big reveal would happen during the performance and hopefully uh, we will confirm those dates soon and will take place online uh, through a live stream. In preparation uh, for the performance that Peter and Ayumi uh, have passed on to Jen and I, uh, they asked us to do two workshops with them uh, separately. So Jen and I each did a workshop um, with them um, that lasted for about an hour and a half. So in total, uh, there's a three hour recording of uh, two workshops um, that really delved into very um, intimate and, and personal um, conversations around our family histories, around um, the exhibition itself, the thematic of, of intimacy and sovereignty and what that means and in regards to this particular uh, installation and performance that Peter and Ayumi were offering. Um, for me personally, I felt that the workshops were very important in just getting us acquainted, in building trust, in feeling comfortable around performance in itself, considering that both Jen and I are not performance performers. So it felt really necessary to have this engagement and encounter with Peter and Ayumi and to really think through these questions that um, come out of uh, the exhibition itself, which has to do with um, how do we uh, implement care in our in our practices and how do we prioritize our our relationships when it comes to thinking through uh, um, our practice and and curation and um, exhibition making and so these were very integral conversations to have and they are offered in the exhibition itself um, uh, through an iPad, um, viewers and audience are able to listen to what came, what occurred during the workshops, um, and 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 to uh, get a glimpse of the types of uh, issues and questions and and concerns that came up around performance um, in the context of an exhibition like Sovereign Intimacies. Nazrin has done such an amazing job of representing Peter and Ayumi's work that I don't think there's that much more for me to add. But I did want to bring up the idea of joy as resistance. This idea of joy as resistance will be something that I come back to over and over and over again in my life and my work. Um, the ideas of what it means to be joyful um, as a way of pushing back against the systems that can keep us down. That joy, uh, as Peter once said, is not something that you ever need to hold back on. I think he specifically said it's like a glass of water. You don't have to stop pouring when you get to the top. You can overflow with it. Um, and so I think that, um, you know, using that idea of joy as a resistance is really empowering. And it doesn't diminish the ideas of of the difficult conversations of colonization, institutional racism, or white supremacy, it really just allows us to uh, find different ways of engaging with it um, and, and living um, our lives to uh, the fullest way possible. I would like to introduce you to Jad Kuja's Megan O'Brien's video, Wrapped in the Cloud. This video is a representation of uh, a weaving that Megan um, has done. And when we began talking to Megan about bringing this work into the exhibition, um, Megan had said that they really wanted that weaving um, to not be out touring, to be 
um, in their community, to be able to, for people in their community to have access to this work um, and, and learn from it, as opposed to it traveling around, um, around the country. And uh, through that conversation, Megan brought up this video that's a collaborative work um, that uh, there's been various um, artists or animators or technologists who have been a part of creating um, with Megan to have this digital representation of, of the weaving. Um, when you see this video, what you really get the sense of is these ideas of constellations or uh, constellations of spirits or people who have had influence over uh, Megan's practice as a weaver. Um, so for me, I really look at, at uh, moments in the video where you see all of these pinpoints of of the, you know, of the weaving, but they're not the way that you would ever see a, a, a drawing of how weavings went. It's something more spiritual and bigger than just this uh, sketch of what a weaving might look like. So this weaving, um, what I see in it is, is these individuals who have passed down tradition, who have supported Megan through her practice, who have um, cared for um, cultural knowledge, um, passed down language and, um, and ceremony and, um, you know, really tried to keep these things alive and, you know, Megan being one of those, those people as well. Um, you see um, a way that all of these people can be ingrained in the warp and the weft of these the, of this weaving and thinking about one string or or you know one person um, you know being really important and relevant because that weaving wouldn't be there without them but when you bring that all together it makes this really strong fabric um, and it's so it's so important to the ways that we think about community and care um, and sharing knowledge and sharing um, emotion and intimacies. Um, it's a really wonderful representation of um, the importance of the strength of what comes when we all are able to come together um, to, to share with one another. Heart Barry Keef. This is a mural piece uh, by the artists Hassan Ashraf and Annie Beach, uh, local artists who are based in Winnipeg and often collaborate. This piece is very much emblematic of sovereign intimacies and the ideas that Jen and I had in regards to how we wanted to focus on process, on relationships, on friendships, and how intimacy conditions a different type of space. And Hassan and Annie here were able to come to plug in, were able to organize a space around them filled with music. Um, as they say, they smoked weed, they hung out, um, they had sparkly, shiny things around to play with. Um, so they set up an environment in which their own process can really drive what you see on the mural here, which is this beautiful amalgamation of different languages coming together through their own ways of being together. And one of the things that really sticks out for me here is that this mural really is comes from an embodied sense of just having a collaboration that stems from love and care and intimacy and trust and from building a space together which really um, satisfies this idea of what intimacy does when it comes to transformation and to emphasize change in this aspect of art making. I would like to add a little bit more to the discussion of Hassan and Annie's work. Uh, it is so important to look to the joy, um, intimacy, caring, and fun that they had while creating this amazing mural. I think it's also important to look back to some of the discussions that they began um, when they were early collaborators together. So specifically, um, as artists, they were looking at language, and Hassan um, 
as English being their third language um, and Annie being someone who is trying to learn their culture's language. Um, it's really interesting to think of those disconnections um, that you had to language when you're put in, a, you know, when you live in a, a colonized country where there are languages that are imposed on you um, as the official languages of this country um, that leave a lot of discomfort. So one of the things uh, that I think is so important is that a lot of times that idea of discomfort is is part of, of these joyful representations of work and specifically in Hassan and Annie's case, I think that's true. But instead of focusing on the discomfort, what Hassan and Annie did was, um, you know, make a make a, a mural, take up a lot of space, celebrate language. So um, Hassan using Arabic script and Urdu and Annie using res slang um, to show others that there are people who um, are here that, that that connect with them through language. So, you know, if you walked up to this mural and, and understood or um, could, uh, you know, felt a connection to these words, um, through being able to read them or having an understanding of what they were, it builds an intimacy automatically. It also um, gives space to things that are not often given space. Um, there's a real celebration of what it means to connect through language, um, to also share language, to share knowledge with each other um, in this this form of of um, cultural dialogue, so um, you know Hassan and Annie learning from each other along the way as well. Sovereign intimacies is also made up of an extensive public program, of many speakers, um, of screenings. Uh, many readings. And so we didn't, Jen and I did not want to think of the public program as separate from the exhibition itself. So everyone involved is considered an artist in this context. And the reason is this type of exhibition is quite an, a, ambitious in, in regards to the thematic. And we really wanted space around creating a very uh, rigorous discourse of what exactly we meant by uh, uh, sovereign intimacies and whose practices and thought and writings and, and, and filmmaking do we look to who really uh, present new perspectives on process-driven work that is not necessarily just about how to build an art practice or how these practices represent intimacy, but how prioritizing intimacy and process and relationship building can lead to transformation, not only in art making, but in, in life itself and in how we want to be in the world and in how we want to transform uh, and, and be part of a bigger change. And the, one of the speakers that we thought of instantly uh, is uh, the prolific writer and curator Wanda Nanabush, who has been doing this work for quite some time uh, uh, through her curating and writing and also through her art practice, uh, really building uh, uh, spaces uh, in order to have these very complex conversations amongst many different communities who have been working toward liberation and sovereignty. And Wanda has been at the forefront of that. Um, another person who we thought of instantly uh, is Norbese Philip, who is a prolific poet, essayist, a novelist, a playwright, an independent scholar, who has written many seminal works, uh, uh, including Zong, uh, the long form poem, which Norbese will uh, uh, facilitate a durational reading of. And Zong is, is, is 
quite powerful uh, um, and reveals the power of language uh, that there's potential for change and transformation in meaning by breaking open form and by breaking open words. There is so much to learn from Norbese's work, so much to listen to and to sit with and to read and to reread and to hold close and to return to. And another um, artist who we have invited to also participate in our pro public program is Melanie Monoceros, who is, uh, does incredible work around by centering community, uh, who's an amazing artist, who's also a weaver, who also makes films, and who's a poet. And she will be reading uh, uh, poetry uh, um, that is very much connected to the way that sh they live, that they practice, and that they inhabit this form of intimacy uh, um, in and through community. Um, David Thomas and Cheyenne Thomas um, will be doing a talk uh, on indigenous architectures and designs. And uh, they are both designers from Peguis First Nations who have collaborated on many projects together, including the Indigenous People's Garden in Assiniboine Park. And they really implement an indigenous worldview into their designs and emphasize the importance of design's relation to the land. And for sovereign intimacies, David and Cheyenne will give an artist talk to discuss their respective practice, their collab collaboration, as well as the projects they are working on now. And we have also invited uh, Mariana Munoz Gomez and Marianne Redhead to co-curate a film program uh, which is called Unspoken and that will bring the thematic of sovereign intimacies uh, uh, to the screen as well. And they'll also have a discussion with some of the filmmakers. At Plug in ICA, uh, we are also hosting and presenting a solo exhibition by the Los Angeles based artist Galare Koshkozeron, uh, which is called Of Sinbad and Sandbox. This is Galare's first show, first solo show in Canada, and is composed of two works Medina Wassel, Connecting Town, which is a 30 minute film shot in 16 millimeter and transferred onto video and U.S. Customs Demand to Know, which is a sculptural work consisting of 20 LED, light, LED lit packages in various sizes. The exhibition brings into view the complex and layered narratives that emerge when an embodied sense of knowing is prioritized. Galare is committed to deep research, foregrounding her desire for inquiry and the interconnected ways in which landscapes, memories, and dreams manifest into the language of moving images and installation work. In the film, Medina Wassel, Galari examines the history of the landscape of the California desert and how it is mired in appropriations of Middle Eastern tropes that began in the early 1900s, and since then has become the site for military training camps. Middle Eastern villages were built and designed in the California desert uh, since 9-11 to simulate the experience of war taking place in Afghanistan and Iraq. The film draws relationships between distant landscapes and presents a perspective on American consumption that is not free of its racialized violence and colonialism. The title of the sculptural work U.S. Customs Demands to Know is a direct quote from a policy legislated after 9-11 that allowed U.S. authorities to search any package without consent. The boxes once contained archival and research material that were sent from Iran to Los Angeles. Laid out across the gallery floor, they condition a sense of dreamlike movement toward an otherworldly place. 
there is something tangible in both pieces that not only acknowledges the violence ingrained in these national security structures, but that moves beyond their worldview and opens the possibility for us, the viewers, to also witness another story being told.